Lock and load. On my way, sir. Ready and waiting. Ready to kill. Ready to kill. Construction complete. Ready and waiting. Consider done. Lock and loaded. Right away, sir. Ready and waiting. Right away, sir. Ready to kill. Ready and On waiting. my way, sir. Ready to kill. Oh yeah. What's up, guys? Welcome back to Game Dev with AI, our place where we're developing our first indie real-time strategy game without any coding skills whatsoever using the tools of AI and some help from the real experts. I'm Mike and this is my first game. I never developed a game myself so I'm very excited to get these things done. If you watched our previous video series we already got our basic layout of the game, some units going and in this one we're finally ready to get started with the developing of the fighting system. The fighting system consists of two major parts. The first is creating a behavior called bullet. Bullet is like a projectile, for example. Machine gun bullet or rocket is also a bullet or tank shell is a bullet. This is an uh, object that will be spawned from the gun or from the barrel, from the turret. It will be coming at certain speed in the direction of the enemy and if we in overlap or on collision with an enemy we should deal the damage, we should spawn the explosion, we should reduce the health of the enemy and then we should destroy the bullet. And the second part in the fighting system is dealing with line of sight. So if we have an enemy in the line of sight of our troop, then we turn into so-called fighting mode, which can be true or false. We stop what we were doing, we stop our pathfinding if we were walking, we turn into the fighting mode, and then every few seconds we should spawn the object bullet, and basically it will fly in the direction of our enemy. Hope this makes sense, that's the whole concept behind it. It's quite easy, but a lot of developments coming into this. So let me quickly show you what we have so far. First let's have the project bullet. First we have the sprite called bullet rocket and I put it on layout. As you can see it's quite small. It's over here. It should be correct size because it will be used later by our units. Let's see what settings and behaviors we have. For rocket I have little bit of gravity because I want the rocket to fly a little bit like it's losing altitude. Remember it's not a 3D game but we are simulating it. And then I have sign and sign 2. This is totally unnecessary and it has nothing to do with fighting, it's just to create an illusion of uh, like our rocket is flying through the 3D space, it's kind of increasing in size, reducing in size. Look at this. It's a little bit like wobbling around, going a little bit lower. So this is basically just an illusion. It has nothing to do with anything we are doing, it's just an animation and it's not necessary. And the, But the most, most important is check edit behaviors and bullet behavior and also destroy outside layout so that when the bullet goes outside of layout it gets destroyed. So add behavior, destroy outside layout to make sure we don't have any bullets outside of the game keep, that keep going. So now let's check bullet rocket. For behavior of the bullet we have the speed, we have acceleration, gravity and bounce of solids. Those settings actually I change in the game so this is not very important but these are defaults that I set for our rocket. To test the rocket, first we need to add the code of the rocket. It's called bullet on created. So bullet on created 
we create a bullet and we set the scale to 0 0.7 because it was way too big before and then we generate object particle smoke that we created in the pre previous video and we need also the object particle fire and both of them are attached to the bullet rocket X this will be like a trace from the rocket then we set correct direction for the fire because fire needs to be turned it's not going up it's going behind the rocket and then very important we have to pin our particle smoke and particle fire they must have pin behavior enabled to our rocket and these are the positions where we pin it this way that rocket is going it will keep on flying with our particles also very important to make sure that rocket doesn't go forever on the screen we have to delete it at certain point and I call it bullet distance traveled if is great or equal to any amount that you want so this way it will be bullet will be destroyed otherwise it will be just keeps going forever and ever so this is the way you kill the bullets when they're going too far if they don't hit anything then. now to test this quicker I also created this test action called keyboard on press R press rocket the system will create a bullet at the position of our mouse and play the rocket sound so let's test it quickly you can see I press R and our rocket keeps on flying pretty nice next one we need to check if we're actually hitting anything to check if we are hitting, uh, we have a condition called on collision with enemy troops. And I have different one for tanks and enemies. Mm, because rocket should behave a little bit different when it's attacking enemy troops and enemy tanks and vehicles. For example, tanks have more armor so they should subtract less from the health. Or you can even generate different effects, for example, explosion will be bigger on the tank and smaller on the robots. So you can choose. Or you can just do bullet on collision with enemies and then it will be the same for all the enemies. It's up to you. You don't have to separate like this. On collision with troops, so we spawn a small explosion. I have now two explosions, like big one when something is completely destroyed with a lot of fire and long one that we created in the previous video but I also did a small one which is just a sprite because each time rocket hits we don't need this giant explosion it's too much fire small explosion is like this let me quickly show you I really have to organize things better for now but we'll do it later small ex explosion is just this it's a quick one then we play the audio of explosion on collision and we deduct, we subtract 49 or whatever amount you want from the health which is an instant variable of our enemy and then very important to destroy the rocket so that it doesn't ke keeps going and I wet a little bit and also destroy the particle fire just in case the same you do to the tank now the rocket will be checking collisions let's check it out in the game so if I hit the rocket see now it's exploding and robot is dead and flying but we'll get to that later but that was me generating the rocket on click now I need to attach the rocket to a friendly unit to make sure when we have line of sight of enemy we start shooting so this is the action here rocket man has line of sight of enemies enemies is the family remember we created enemies family which has all the enemies here so in case we have sight of our enemies we stop what we are doing for example we are walking we need to stop all that stop going we set fighting to true 
so we know in other conditions for example capture the flag or go somewhere we need to be checking that we are not fighting because we don't want to be like walking around when we are under fire set fighting to true we stop our animation of walking and we set the idle animation or you can put here basically when i have like firing animation like like this with a gun but i don't have it yet and then then troops friendly will spawn the bullet rocket and this one is very important there are different image points on the object let me show you quickly what i mean for example troops friendly this robot right it has center origin with an image point zero in my case it's the center of the robot so if it's turning for example or it's moving it will be relative to this position but I don't want rocket to come from the middle of his body. I want rocket to come from his bazooka, right? For him, his rocket launcher. So I create additional new image point one, and I put it here. You can see it's in the center of his gun. So this way, when I call spawn bullet, I set image point one. So this will come from his uh, bazooka, right? Now, next I need to set the bullet speed. I want it random because rocket needs to be very random and very inaccurate. I don't want rockets to be very accurate. I want chaos. I want everything to be missing and then shooting again. So a lot of fun and chaos. Then I set again angle towards enemies and I randomize a little bit. No, there is no randomization, but I have gravity for a rocket so if i put it straight it will just go down too much and i place y minus 200 so it's targeting higher first in the sky and then rocket is like self-targeting rocket it will go down so you can see i play one of the rocket sounds using the choose what we discussed in the previous video we imported our sounds we use the choose to select one of the random ones now we wait a little bit our rocket is up in the sky and now we set angle towards enemy's correct position again. So now our rocket will fly a little bit in the sky, wait, and then crash into the enemies. This way it's a little bit more fun. It's like in real fighting goes up and then gets the target and hits it instead of just flying straight. Then we wait three seconds and we just destroy the rocket just in case to make sure it doesn't go forever somehow let's quickly check and before we check i also wanted to mention this with rockets we need to be checking how close we are to the enemies because if we are too close if we are way too close to the enemies then our idea with rocket going high and then down doesn't make much sense because you have to shoot straight if you're really standing real close to the enemy right so you have to be comparing absolute distance between troop friendly x and enemies and if it's very small then we hit straight to their position and we wait less time hope this makes sense this is just for rockets so now if our enemy goes here Lock and, loaded. and On I my go way, here sir. I stop I shoot to him and then I capture my flag behavior he's also capturing his flag nobody wants to fight today all right Lock and loaded. let's see he's coming back Lock and ready loaded. to kill all right hit him yes well done now let's ready hit and On my the way, tank sir. There's jeep also coming. Complete. We'll get to the jeep later. See? We killed the jeep. We're hitting the tank now. Tank doesn't fight. Okay, it's done. And that's the turret. Also very cool. I'll explain in the next video how to make a moving turret. It's another thing I learned recently. So now we see rockets are working very well. They're hitting the targets. Construction complete. And everything is working as we intended. 
And to conclude this quick video about our fighting system, of course, it's important to mention what happens when the unit dies. So this is done here. Let's show. Remember, troops enemy, we're checking his health. Health is his instant variable. Troops enemy has several instant variables, including health and also dead, which can be true or false. Now, if his health is zero or less, uh, in this case, you, we can just delete him, you know. The simple way is just delete him. Troops enemy destroy. But I wanted to have a little more fun. I wanted him to, you know, fly in the air because I'm trying to make a fun game. So I created a function called blue on hit, which makes uh, him fly in the air. But I don't want to pay attention to this right now because it has nothing to do with the fighting system. We will get to this a little bit later in different video. For now, the simple way is to create a separate sprite called sprite blue de bot dead. Basically, this sprite will be just him displaying when he's already dead. He's flying around and then falling. Why I have two sprites? Because if I try to animate my current one, the one that I already have, I had the following problem. It was still not destroyed. It was flying around, already dead, but my units keep on shooting into the dead body. I tried to use this set dead to true, but I couldn't completely figure out why it wasn't working. They kept on shooting until troops enemy is destroyed into his body. That's why I destroy him right away when his health is zero or less. And I create a dead one, dead body, blue, blue one. And then I animate the dead one that it will be flying away. And our real one is already destroyed. So now you can understand my logic behind this. Once our enemy is dead, we create the dead one in the position of the, the one that was just killed. And then we set enemies dead as true and troop enemy destroy. We destroy it. And for the dead body, I edit uh, rotate behavior and sign again just to animate how he's flying around. And audio of boomerang. And finally, I wait three seconds and destroy the body. <coughs> Sounds really terrible. Okay, let's show. I'll just hit him myself with the rockets. Let's see. See? And that was flying, was already a dead body. Do we have more? Yeah, somewhere here. Couple of more units. Let's try. Oh, I missed. Come on. Yeah. Alright. Alright. Perfect. Construction complete. Now everything is working as intended and that's pretty much the basics of the fighting system and the bullet behavior. Hope you enjoyed this quick video and the next one we'll be discussing right away, the turret. Turret is also really cool. It's automatically turning On my waist. and shooting. Look, if I'm walking, it's turning around. And it can be also used on the vehicles. Complete. So, for example, in case of our tank, I want the turret to turn around. A lot of exciting stuff is coming. I'm very excited to see the progress of our development. I hope you are as well. Let me know in the comments below what you think so far, what I could improve further. And that's all for today. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to us next time. Cheers. Mike's out.